Hello and welcome back again for some more time value of money exercises. Um, this time I'm going to go a little bit deeper into uh, different types of payments. So far we've dealt with single payments or lump sums where we kind of pop in a uh, lump sum of money today and see how much it's worth in the future or vice versa. You know, the question can be kind of altered around um, to say, you know, this is how much money someone has in the future. How much did he have way back then if the interest rate has been this amount for this amount of time? Um, however, many assets provide a series of cash inflows over time and many obligations like auto obligations and student and mortgage loans require a series of payments. So as we mentioned last video, if the payments are equal and they are made at fixed intervals, then the series is called an annuity. So let's just write that here, uh, annuity, um, which is just a series of equal payments at fixed intervals for a specified number of periods. Um, now, before we move on, it's important to specify that there are two different types of annuities. Um, there is just an ordinary annuity, or you know what we call a deferred annuity, maybe. Um, so let's just write ordinary. Um, an ordinary annuity is, for example, a hundred dollars paid at the end of each of the next three years. That would be considered a three-year ordinary annuity. Um, the idea over here, and the keyword that you're looking for, for example, in a test, if you were if you were being asked about an annuity. He wouldn't tell you this is an ordinary annuity problem. He would just tell you that, oh, a hundred dollars is being paid at the end of each of the next three years. Calculate the present value. We calculate the future value. Um, so the idea over here is the the keyword is end. Um, that is a keyword because the payments are going in to uh, the security, or they or maybe they're even being paid out um, at the end um, of each period. So. If the payments occur at the end of each year or each period, then we've got an ordinary annuity. Now, if the payments are made at the beginning, um, then that is what we call an annuity due. Um, let's just switch back. Uh, annuity due. Um, an annuity due is an annuity whose payments occur at the beginning of each period. Um, now, obviously, ordinary annuities are a lot more common in finance, and that's why they're called ordinary. Um, but you know, when you see the word annuity just used uh, regularly, assume that the payments are occurring at the end of the period, um, unless otherwise noted. Um, over here, let's just write the keyword in because the keyword you're looking for over here is beginning. And if you've had a little mess with your financial calculator, you may have seen on the screen sometimes uh, BEG or beginning mode. Um, and that is because the calculator can be set, or i.e. you can tell the calculator that you are trying to calculate um, an annuity due or an ordinary annuity. Um, in regular mode, the calculator assumes it's an ordinary annuity and it will put the payments in at the end of the period. If you want to calculate an annuity due on your financial calculator, you need to tell it that you are calculating an annuity due by changing it to beginning mode. Um, this is done differently on every calculator. I can't give you specific help for uh, the HB calculator because I've got the Texas Instruments. Um, but obviously, um, you can just have a look inside the instruction manual or ask your professor, and I'll tell you how to do that. Um, to start speaking about this, uh, I think that what we should do is we should draw some timelines. Um, so. Let's go, scroll down over here, um, let's start with uh, ordinary. Ordinary, okay, so let's draw a timeline. Now I remember this from before, um, when we had you know, our present value, our future value, um, and we were you know, trying to calculate a lump sum. Um, you know how much will it be worth at the end of five years, or how much will you know how much is it worth today? Um, considering that there's one lump sum um, over here, let's say again there's you know period zero, one, two, three, four, five, and it's always the same. You know period zero um, is always going to be today. It's always considered today in finance. Um, but let's say that we have let's say a one hundred dollar three year five percent ordinary annuity. And this is kind of, uh, you know, this is kind of you, you know, depositing money um, annually 
you know specified pe uh, fixed period intervals um, the same amount of money every single year or a lot of the time you know if you go into a retirement plan an insurance plan will kind of you'll come in today with this massive lump sum of money hopefully that you've made from investing um, you know in specific asset classes according to your risk profile um, so you put in a lump sum today and then you ask yourself how much money would I need to put in today in order to receive a certain payment every single period until well we don't really want to talk about until when but you know what I'm talking about so uh, let's kind of take an ordinary annuity that uh, you are depositing money into and then we'll ask ourselves about the future value of that annuity so if I put in a certain amount of money let's say um, uh, let's say well uh, let's just uh, not like I said before, three years. Let's do let's do five years. Um, so let's say it's a one hundred dollar, um, one hundred dollar payments are ca are going into this annuity. Um, so that's going to be our payment. Um, our present value. Well, you'll see, it's actually nothing uh, because the first payment going into the security is happening actually right over here. Um, so the present value is zero in an ordinary annuity in this problem uh, because there's no money going in today. If of course you were, you know, you had you were, uh, a retirement plan or an insurance plan, uh, something like that, where it pays you, uh, sorry, not an insurance plan, a retirement plan, where you kind of put a lump sum in today, that would be your present value, and then you would be able to ask yourself how much money can it afford to pay out until you know the future value is zero until it's completely dead, um, but. You know, in this example, let's just deal with present value of zero. Payment is a um, hundred dollars, so that's going to be negative a um, hundred dollars, and it goes on for five years. So minus a hundred, minus a hundred, minus a hundred, minus a hundred. Um, so it happens one, two, three, four, and five times. Um, the future value is what we want to solve for. We want to find out if we if we put in a hundred bucks every single year for the next five years, and we're receiving an interest rate, let's say, of ten percent. Um, and we know that n is five. You know, how much money will be in this account at the end of five years? That's what an ordinary annuity problem is asking. And this is really like, um, it's more of an insurance plan to be honest. It's more of an insurance plan because. A retirement plan, really, all of these would be positive because you finish working here, you put a ton of cash into the account, and then all of these are positives, and it can, you know, and you can kind of live live off it. It becomes like a fixed income security. Um, the idea over here, though, is appears to be more of an insurance plan where you're kind of paying out this amount every single, um, you know, every single period, um, and then at the end, what the future value is will be this massive lump sum at the end, and then you can kind of take all of that money. Um, and then put it into your retirement plan, um, you know. So kind of we can imagine the hypothetical line continuing on over here. Um, you know, all of this is going to get lumped um, into this future value, and then from that future value, that could become a present value that we can kind of go out into the future with a new security. Um, but I hope that wasn't too complicated. But yeah, that's basically that's basically how how it works. So now let's move on to the second type of annuity, if you remember. Uh, we had ordinary annuity and annuity due. Um, so the trick over here is to remember that we need to tell the calculator that it's annuity due. Um, let's just write that in. The first thing to do over here is switch the calculator to beginning mode. I think on, on most calculators it'll just be signified by BEG, it'll say BEG um, on the on the screen. So let's draw a timeline for this. It's very, very similar. Uh, the idea is is that instead of putting in um, let's do again there are one, two, three, four, and five, instead of putting in your first money into the security at the end of the first year, you actually begin right over here. So minus a hundred on day one. So that's basically you coming perhaps to an auto loan or something to that effect and they say, well, your payments have to start today. You have to put some type of um, you know, some down payment, but then you actually have to start paying uh for this car lease today. So 
that would actually be you know like this minus 100 on d0 um, so you know and it would continue continue in that in that fashion but everything's kind of being shifted up um, by one so this again is also um, you know it's going on for five it's it's, go it's five payments um, so n is is also going to be five here this is just the uh, graphical uh, representation, the timeline representation, um, but you know, i is going to be 10% here as well, payment is minus 100, uh, it's going to look exactly the same as the one above, except for the fact um, that you know, the present value is also zero, uh, it's just this payment is beginning, um, except for the fact that except for the fact that the first payment is is going in today. So again over here you're just going to put all that in and then you're going to solve um, for the future value just as you know we kind of did above um, with the ordinary annuity. So there's the ordinary annuity um, and there is the annuity due which is beginning mode or due um, depending on what it says but just make sure that you switch um, the calculator to, to that setting. Um, in terms of tests and questions uh, you'll always get an annuity question because it's a very popular type of security. Um, the keywords you have to be looking out for are end and beginning. Um, if you ever get a question, you know he's not going to tell you, um, you know, but the question will definitely lean towards some type. There'll be some type of indicator there which tells you whether the payments are beginning today. So if they're beginning today, or the, you know the payments are starting today, you look out for words like beginning. Um, of the you know beginning of the loan term or the word today that will t you know tell you a lot about whether it's an ordinary annuity or an annuity due. Um, other you know pointers or other indicators of the fact that it's an annuity question um, is that you'll see the word payment or you'll see regular payment or fixed payment because an annuity um, is a fixed payment you know over a fixed interval. Uh, sorry, with a fixed interval. Um, so you'll know that he's asking you an annuity question. Anytime it's a lump sum question, you won't see any any words such as payment or fixed intervals because it's just a lump sum. You know, there's a lump sum at the beginning, and he's asking you about how much there is at the end, or he's telling you about how much there is at the end, and he's saying what was the lump sum at the beginning, um, or different variations of that question. So just make sure to understand the difference between fixed payments like an annuity. Um, and lump sum payments, which is like the first, you know, couple of videos, which were more about just lump sum present value and future value problems, which are obviously a lot simpler. So, uh, yeah, that's it for today.